NANI? Hi everyone, I'm Lawrence, and in this video I'm going to talk about PSP games you might not know. Enjoy the video. <laughs> you think your toy robot can beat mine? You're up against this chat. Then Ball Sankey does justice to a good anime. The premise of the animation is that kids build toy robots and put them into battle. The graphics are amazing for a PSP game, and the game also has cutscenes from the anime. And the in-game cutscenes look amazing too. In the game, someone corrupts the toy robots in the world and now you and your friends go on a world tour to solve problems. It's really nice that you have a world to explore, because this way areas feel super varied. In them you roam around like you would in an RPG and take on quests and side quests. There are also some occasional random encounters that get you into battle. The combat system is amazing, it's like some simplified version of a Gundam game. It's fast paced, you get combos and special moves, you can customize your loadout in very different sorts, you get plenty of options there. So many that you can say that you can build your own robot. Ok, it's not as deep as a Gundam game, but still you get plenty of options. Also the combat has giant boss battles. On PSP you have the disadvantage that you can't control the camera. I wasn't bothered by it because I'm used to not having control over the camera on PSP games even if reviewers seem to constantly complain about it. The game keeps the camera centered behind the character, but still some complaint. So just know that on PlayStation Vita you have the camera controls, but on PSP the camera stays locked behind the character. Other quirks of the game include the dungeons, which aren't really dungeons. So dungeons in this game become this board from where you enter battles. Also by the end of the game you get side scrolling levels like this with very clunky controls. The story is great and you can understand it without even knowing Japanese. As differences between the Vita and the PSP version just know that they are the same game. Only that the Vita has better graphics, slightly better graphics. And the Vita also has camera controls because it has two joysticks. Overall, I totally recommend you to play Dumbbell Sankey. It's a hidden gem. The game has high production value both visually and gameplay wise. Don't miss out on this one. Ducati Challenge is a PSP mini title. And the game is pretty decent, but don't expect much because, as the title says, it's a mini. You don't get that much, but at least what you get is nice. The controls are ok, they aren't great nor terrible, just ok. It's nice that you can turn on or off the brake assist. There are 6 bikes in total, I know, not a lot, but at least they look and sound different. But at least the tracks are nice, there are 12 huge tracks in the game, and they look nice and detailed. As game modes you get just quick race, championship and multiplayer. Overall, while the game doesn't have that much production value, it's bare bones, but also pretty decent, so if you're into bike races, try it out. <laughs> yeah, boy. Fired Up is good, but it's also lacking anything to make it stand out. It's some sort of twisted metal turned into an open world game. The premise is great, there's a plot with some stereotype characters, but the end result is rather generic. The plot doesn't tell you much, nor hooks you, characters are too washed out to be interesting, and the story is text based anyway, there's no voice acting or cutscenes. The world is an empty wasteland, no pedestrians, no other cars, no, no details, it's just long stretches of stretched pixelated textures and so many enemy cars. The missions are generic too, objectives include the expected destroy all enemies or destroy that target, or the annoying escort mission. Weapons are generic too, rocket launchers, chain guns, EMPs. You can also get new vehicles by driving into garages hidden around the levels and while there aren't a lot of them, it's worth seeking them out as they drive different. At least the 4 huge maps are detailed. They're filled with ramps, pipes to drive on, oil rigs to destroy and even building interiors that you can drive into. So even if everything is pixelated and, and has stretched textures, at least at the drivable details you get a lot. And what I mean by that is that even if you don't get that much visual detail, at least there is detail in objects you can interact with. And also the performance is remarkable. It doesn't have dips and the frame rate remains great throughout the whole playthrough. Overall, the game is fun. 
It's short and generic, but it also has charm. The story is uninteresting, but the gameplay is decent and fun enough to keep you playing. Also the ad hoc multiplayer modes are fun. In multiplayer you get King of the Hill, death matches and the simulation. So, so even if the game is generic, in multiplayer is where the game shines the most. But still, even if I was super critical with the single player mode, it's still fun. It has its own charm, it's fun to play, and overall the game is great, even if it feels generic on the long run and is kinda short. Free running sucks, because the controls are overly complicated. The gameplay idea is acceptable, you don't get a plot, you just get some maps to roam in and you do challenges in those maps, but even if it sounds like the first Tony Hawk games, don't get your hopes up, because this game has some horrible controls. In order to do tricks, you do combos, but the combos are so clunky to pull off that the game is more annoying than fun. And there are tricks that, if you fail them, you have to repeat a long streak of button mashes. Still, what is praiseworthy about the PSP version is that it looks identical to the PS2 version. And the port doesn't have framerate issues. As a port, the game is remarkable. As a game, it sucks, because of how overly complicated the controls are. Alright, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section. You will help me a lot. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram and Discord. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and tell review thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.